Good morning, everyone. It is a joy today to welcome you to this assembly for the purpose of worship, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are here today for the purpose of lifting up his name, sharing our testimony about his goodness and greatness, and we want you to join us from the heart, from the very core of your being, in worshiping our Savior. Thank you today for joining us. I pray God's blessings to you. Let me take a moment and just remind us of some scriptures that are so meaningful. Eternal nuggets from God's word. Some things that come to us today from Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He satisfies the longing soul. He fills the hungry soul with goodness. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. He broke their chains in pieces. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. They cry out to the Lord in their trouble. He brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm. He guides them to their desired haven. He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell that they may establish a city for a dwelling place. Folks, let me tell you this morning, God knows where he's going. Nations may evolve and devolve. Peoples may come and go. But our God and his word abides forever. An unshakable foundation for faith confidence, and assurance. Let us enter into the presence of God this morning with hearts that are tuned to the frequency of eternity. May we give him thanks today. Will you do that with us? Join me in prayer before we begin our singing and worship today. Invite the Lord to the presence and his presence to be where you are this morning and let God minister his presence and glory in your life. Our Father, we thank you today that you have bridged the gap between God and man through Jesus Christ, the virgin-born Son of the living God, Jesus, Lord and Savior, God Almighty, walking in the flesh, crucified, raised the third day. He never saw corruption. Thank you, Lord, that your people, the hearts of your people, tuned to the frequency of truth, people whose souls are redeemed and delivered from distress. Oh God, these souls shall never see corruption because the spirit of revelation and the spirit of resurrection dwells in the hearts of those who love you. Take this time today, we pray, Heavenly Father, crown it with the monarch of Christ. May Jesus be Lord of this moment, and may we enter into your presence with thanksgiving and praise. We lift you up and we praise you today. We exalt you. We magnify you. And we pray that the hand of God shall guide and direct all that goes on in this service to the honor of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your prayers today. I want to share the word of God with you in just a little while, but first, let's bring ourselves into the throne room of God with his praise. Lift him up and worship him. Renee, come if you will. Let's worship Jesus. I will 
was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to to Him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Oh, his love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Join with me in singing one more song, and that is redeemed how i love to proclaim it amen are you redeemed this morning are you thankful that you're redeemed amen redeemed his child and forever i am his child and forever i am thank you lord thank you Reminds me of the song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved not a good old boy, but a wretch. That's not a popular word for self-application today. Wretch. Who wants to be known as a wretch? When we come into the presence of God, and we have a revelation and a vision of who the Almighty is. It creates a sense of our own unworthiness. Those who wrote those blessed songs of old, redeemed, saved a wretch like me, had a revelation of who God is. And today, God still shares his ID with those who would take the time and open their hearts to listen and receive. May we hear today the voice of the Spirit of God as he says, you don't have to continue in your sin. You can be a child of God. What a joy it is. It makes me want to take just a moment of intermission here and say, hallelujah, for the goodness of God, he delivers them from their distresses when they call on God the Lord. Can I hear an amen through the camera this morning? Amen. God is good. May his people worship him and praise him and lift him up and know that he is indeed God. 
He's big enough today to handle every need that we bring to him. He is God. He's big enough to hold the world in the palm of his hand, the very oceans of this great world in the very small of his hand. But he's big enough to master every storm. He's able today to heal and strengthen. And I know that there are some of you who have significant needs today. We're going to be praying with you. I believe God's big enough. And let me tell you this. Not only do you have the embrace of Almighty God when you call upon Him, but you have the embrace of the family of God standing along beside of you, raising their hand to God Almighty on your behalf, praying, seeking the face of God, trusting Almighty God to minister and heal and strengthen, intervene on your behalf. Maybe you have loved ones that are lost, lost. I mean, lost. They may be good people, but lost is lost for eternity. But our God is good to save. God still answers prayer. God still loves people. God loves the work of God in the lives. He loves to work in the lives of people. Let us be people responsive to his work. Prayerful that he will work. I'm sure there are people I'm praying for. I feel like there are people I'm praying for. That nobody in this universe is praying for. No one else. There are children that come to my mind almost every day. People I've met in the course of ministry. Only God knows where they are. Only God knows the circumstances they are in today. But let me tell you something. The love of God reaches out to them because he reaches out to them through prayers of God's people. We're praying with you today. We are embracing you and your need today. This morning, he sent his word and healed them. He didn't just almost heal them. He didn't just give them an emotional tingle. He gave them healing. Our Father, today, I pray that through this medium, those here and those there shall receive the touch of Almighty God. I pray that the embrace of the glory and presence of Almighty God shall move, shall minister, shall touch, shall heal. Oh God, let your glory flow today. Let the ministry of your divine touch move, we ask. God, we pray today that there shall be a revelation of who you are on behalf of those who have confidence in you. We thank you, Lord, today for reaching out and touching those who have needs and those in this audience who have an awareness of need elsewhere. Maybe the need is not theirs, but their prayer focus is for someone, somewhere, some other situation other than where they are. God, we pray today in the name of Jesus that there shall be an answer from the glory world into this broken world that will bring the honor and glory of God's arena of activity and being into the lives of people that are broken. Oh God, may we be steadfast in our faith and confidence that you're still the God who answers prayer. You're still the God who heals broken bodies and broken minds and broken spirits and broken lives. You're still the God of Almighty, still the God able to touch. 
we know you today. We thank you that through Jesus, we have this divine touch. Thank you, Lord, because of your goodness that abides forever. Thank you for your love for us. We thank you for answers today. We thank you for the goodness of Jesus. We pray your touch on one and all, and that Jesus may be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in that prayer today. Thank you for joining us in worship to the Lord. Renee's coming back in just a few moments. Before she comes back, let me tell you that what you do for Jesus is a form of worship. Whatever you do for the Lord is a gift to him. When you give your time in prayer, you are gifting God with part of you. You are surrendering that part of you to his service. Be a servant of the Lord. Whenever the, God, the, the Lord call, the, the Holy Spirit calls you, bumps your heart and says, it's time for prayer for someone. I, I texted someone hundreds of miles away this morning because I just felt like that was the thing to do. Let them know that I prayed for them today. Folks, listen, we're part of the hand of God. Amen? He embraces others through us. So be that prayer warrior. And, and thank you for your support, your financial gifts and giving and support. Thank you for sending offerings through the mail. Thank you for conveying them otherwise, bringing them by the church or giving online so that the missionary work of the church here and abroad can continue. The witness of this church goes around the world. Even though it may be a small church in number, we have a big reach because we have a big God. And you know what? I have seen God meet our needs, and they have at times been quite significant. But I've seen God meet the need before I actually saw the need come around the curve. I've seen God touch and move and minister so that when the need was there, so was the supply. He's still the same God, folks. He's not just the God of the church or the church building or the church geography. He's the God of the person. May God help us all. Listen, we want to help you to learn about serving Jesus. This evening at 6 o'clock, Sunday school, via Zoom. If you want to come to the church, then you'll need to let us know because we will usually do the, that particular Zoom broadcast from elsewhere. We will be opening the church later on for other activities. This is the only activity we actually have in church in-house presently, the Sunday morning service. But Sunday school still goes on, and it's a time to practically interact and learn the Word of God. So meet us on Zoom this evening at 6. Next week, it'll be earlier than that because of a schedule that needs to be met elsewhere, but we want you to know that we're continuing on. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock here at the church through the Zoom. If you want to join us here, you may do that, but we actually have the Zoom available on Wednesday as well. But Sunday morning, be here and present, if you will, for worshiping the Lord. This week, this coming week, is a very busy week for us, for this church, and for others who are helping us, because we have in, on Saturday a what we call a ride for the light. It's a part of the missionary ministry. Last year, this church gave over $3,000 to speed the light. And part of it was because people got involved in Ride for the Light. This year, we're having that again. This is actually the first major event on Tanglefoot Trail here locally. There'll be people who will ride their bikes 50 miles on that day from Pontotoc all the way to Houston, Mississippi, and back. We would ask you to pray with us for the safety of our bikers 
We pray that God will help us to have good weather. We pray that God will give us a good time of fellowship together and keep everyone safe and well. They are over currently, and I understand others will be registering later, but they're currently between 50 and 60 registered to ride in this Ride for the Light. It's going to be a good year for Speed the Light again, as far as this church is concerned, because of your prayers and because of participation from many other people. Be in prayer for us, will you? And then next Sunday is Father's Day. Let's gather together in honor of our fathers, and let's let Jesus, our the one who has given, shared his inheritance with us, the one who has given us his inheritance because of the Father. Let's let him join him in giving thanks to our Heavenly Father because he has done so much for us. Amen? God's good. His mercy endures forever. He loves to bring people out of distress. We read that this morning. So let's join together and continue worship. Remembering these announcements again thank you for your support and sponsorship as we worship the lord as we continue going with god renee come if you will what a mighty god we serve what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it once more. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer, in Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He says, he's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him will I trust, praise the name of Jesus, Jesus, I crown you. With praise, Jesus, I crown you with praise. I love and adore you. I bow down before you, Jesus, I crown you with praise. Jesus, I crown you with praise. Jesus, I crown you with praise. I love and adore you. I bow down before you, Jesus.
Jesus, I crown you with praise. I love and adore you. I love and adore you. I bow down before you. Jesus, I crown you with praise. Sing it to him once more, church. I love and adore you. I love and adore you. I bow down before you. Jesus, I crown you with praise. Holy is thy name. Holy is thy name. There's no other name that I love so much. No other name with a healing touch. Jesus, holy is thy name. Holy is thy name. Holy is thy name. There's no other name that I love so much. No other name with a healing touch. Jesus, holy is thy name. There's no other name. There's no other name that I love so much. No other name with a healing touch. Jesus, holy is thy name. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name master savior jesus like the fragrance after the rain jesus Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. Oh, yes, there's something about that name. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We bless your name. We glorify you, Lord. You alone are worthy, Lord. And we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We lift up your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, as your servant comes now to deliver your word to us, Lord, to serve 
your word to your people at your table. I pray, oh God, that you would help us to open our hearts, Lord, to receive what you have prepared for us. Help us to receive it, Lord. Help it to nourish our spirit person that we could be strengthened and that we could bless others from this word that you share with us today. Thank you for it, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And thank you for joining us, joining with this assembly of God's people for the purpose of lifting up Jesus. Our thanks to the Lord for his presence today so far. And I pray that he shall continue to be with us as we continue to proceed with this time dedicated to his honor. I also want to say thanks to those who are here and those who uh, assist us in the production of this event, we pray today that God shall minister to the needs of each one, and we are grateful for your help in getting this done. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your help today. I'm going to turn to the Word of God this morning, I'm going to... Um, May want to attend to the volume here just a little bit, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Turn to the Word of God for instruction from the eternal counsels of God, looking to a familiar passage of Scripture. We're using multiple media today, and we're having a few challenges, but who can expect anything else when you're working for God? There will always be challenges to the work that we put forth for Him. <clears throat> Looking in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're looking at a familiar verse of Scripture from a different angle today. Romans chapter 8. We're going to begin at verse 28, go down to a later verse. But pay close attention, and uh, let's hear what God has to say today. Romans 8, 28 and following. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Let's go back to verse 28. And we know that all things work for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Right? Listen again. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Right? Listen closely. And we know that all things work for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Right? Listen closely. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. If you were listening very, very closely, you noticed a one word omission in some of those readings. Now, last Sunday, we talked to you about being salt and light. That message simmered in my soul for days after preaching that message to you last Sunday. I want to talk to you today for a while about what goes with salt and light and the influence that we have for Christ and when that that goes with that testimony begins. Let's look at it this way. <clears throat> we know that all things work together for good. Here's an example of work. Not the kind of work spoken of here. It's found in Philippians 2.13. It is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. That's a different kind of work. He says, Philippians 2.13, that it is God who works in you. That's a different kind of work. Where he says here, we know that all things work together for good. Well, what's the difference? Here's some examples of work together. If you would turn to Mark chapter 16, the last verses of that chapter of that book. So then after, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through a, Signs accompanying them, or through the accompanying signs, amen. And so closes the book of Mark. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Reading through the new, uh, from the New King James Version. The Lord working with them, accomplishing, accompanying signs. Well, that's, that's the kind of working together we're finding in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Not that God works with, but God works together. He works with, not in necessarily, as he did in Philippians chapter 2. Working together is here in Romans 8, 28. It's also in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. We then as workers together with him. 
also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. It's also found in James 2.22, where James is speaking about the connection between works and faith. He references Abraham, and he says in the form of a question in your text, but let me give it to you in the form of a statement. Abraham's faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect or complete. So there is an intrinsic connection between what God is doing together with his people. When we enter into the purpose of God, we enter a higher calling than the survival instinct. Do you hear that this morning? We are concerned about something far bigger than life as we know it here. You see, God worked together with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, the apostles, to bring to us a message today that still lives. Their work still lives because they were working with God and the eternal eternal purpose of God rested upon their souls and their minds and their hearts, and they gave the message that we take today as our message. And let me tell you something. When we walk in the light of God's message and in God's purpose, we work together for a long-term ministry that's bigger than this life. Can somebody say amen? We know that all things work for good. No. We know that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. A significant difference in the terminology that God has put into his word. Together makes work something other than just work. Amen. How many of you all, when you were children, had to go out and garden or plow the field or mow the grass or, or ladies wash the dishes or other things? Didn't that work seem easier when you had others out there doing the same thing with you? Amen. So when we are working with God, the long-term purposes of God are our purposes. This is how that Paul, the apostle, was able to endure some of the horrendous persecutions and difficulties that he experienced because he wasn't doing it for Paul. The old Saul of Tarsus had died. It was crucified to the cross of Christ. It was a new Saul of Tarsus, now Paul, the apostle, who was living, and the purpose of God was alive in his life so that he was able to step out into the very jaws of persecution and proclaim the message of Jesus that was bigger than him. Hallelujah. Together makes work something other than just work. Work can become joyful when others are involved. And let me tell you, there's no joy like the joy of working when God's involved. When God is in the mix of the ministry, we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for Almighty God. And let me just put a little plug in here for those of you who are involved in what is called secular work. That's not your vocation. That's just your avocation. That's just your ticket to your real vocation, and that is serving God. You just do that vocational work on the side to, be, to, to pay the bills and get some food, to be able to do your real vocation, which is the purpose of God. Can somebody say amen? We are living in a bigger world than this terra firma. We're living in a bigger world than this planet. We're living according to the plan and purpose of Almighty God. We're working together. As relates to our text, all things 
do not work for good unless there is a glue that brings everything together with an overarching purpose. The tapestry of providence makes what seems to be a lot of unrelated and irrelevant details come together to produce a whole that is better than the individual components. Workers together. All things work together. It's one word in the Greek. It has the word work in it, but it comes in with a prefix that makes it together. And without that prefix, it's just work. So thank God today we're working with God together. Amen? Point number one, there is a divine order in God's providence. An arrangement that God can see. We can't always see it. We're just the thread doing the ins and outs and ups and downs and different directions. We don't always see the master plan. In the Old Testament, the tribes of Israel were assigned to specific places around the tabernacle in the wilderness. On the east side, there was Judah, Issachar, Zebulun. On the south side, there was Reuben and Simeon and Gad. Behind the tabernacle to the west, there was Ephraim and Manasseh and Benjamin. To the north, there was Dan and Asher and Naphtali. God assigned each of these specifically with their armies so that the holy presence of God, the testimony of God, the tabernacle of God in the midst of the camp had a protection that encircled the presence of God. Encircle their testimony. There's a sermon there. Encircle your testimony. Amen? Live in such a way that there's an insulation between you and the outside world. Praise God. The glory of God. You don't want anything to touch the glory of God in your life. Are you with me this morning? You want to keep the armies of God and the armies of your defense up intact and able, ready for the moment of attack from any direction. Let's live for Christ. Can you hear? Can, can I hear an amen this morning? Amen. I like to hear a little reinforcement sometimes. And so if it can come through the camera, just go ahead and send it my way. All right. So not only were there armies around the tabernacle, but also right around the tabernacle, up close and tight, were the Levites. They were not assigned a specific arena in some outlying area because it was their duties to, in reality, do the work of the tabernacle. And they had to be close enough to get the work done. They worked together. God gave each of the Levite families a place of service. To the west was Gershom. To the south was Kohath. To the north was Merari. Well, who's on the east? At the door, the eastern door, the eastern gateway into the holy place and the holy of holies reserved for the high priest. And guarding him was the tribe of Judah and Issachar, Zebulun. So the, the high priest was close enough to do his work. But he was never left alone to do his work. He had other Levites close by. He had those of the family of the priests close by. And they were workers to gather in the overall purpose of God for mediation. Each had a function to do in relation to the tabernacle. God today arranges the church similarly. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, 
And then verse 18, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. God has set members, each one of them, in the body as he pleased. He has assignments, various places around the glory and the testimony so that each of us can have a function. No one is unimportant in the kingdom of God. We are workers together. All things work together for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Number two, there's a divine giftedness for God's purposes. There are specialized callings. Well, Brother Smith, I can't sing, I can't preach, I can't teach, so there's nothing I can do, okay? No. Excuse me. I have for years prayed for workers in this church. Hello? Amen? There are always needs that need attending. Uh, just to give you a hint. Or do I have to do that? I've spent hours praying this week. You would expect that, wouldn't you, from a pastor, preacher? How about if the pastor has also spent hours on a lawnmower? How about, how about vacuuming the floor? How about doing other things that are part of the work of God? I won't go too far with this, but just know that there are skills and talents that can be used in the work of God. Some of you guys are extremely good at talking to people one-to-one. -one. Please. Don't be afraid or ashamed to put your testimony right on the table and let people know, hey, there's a joy in working with the Lord. In knowing the Lord, in walking with the Lord, there is a joy to be had. And so God gives giftedness for purposes. Specialized callings. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 5 and 6. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works. All in all. God who works. Get that? All in all. There's a divine imperative, verse number 3. Not only is there a divine providence, in a divine purpose, but there's a divine imperative. What is that imperative? Be you also ready for in such an hour as you think not. The Son of Man cometh. Jesus said that. He was talking about being ready for the coming of the Lord. Listen, folks, Jesus is coming soon, and it may be today, and when he comes, it's going to be too late to start saying, oh, I think I need to Start praying, reading my Bible, getting good. Too late for that. Matter of fact, the only way you can get good is to start right now seeking Him. Read the Word. Stay on your knees. Walk in prayer. Take a prayer walk. My wife walks long distances around here sometimes. Praying. Seeking the face of God. It's okay to walk and pray. It's okay to work and pray. As a matter of fact, it's okay to pray always without ceasing. So explore your giftedness and know that God has said, be ready always to give an answer. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 5. Be ready. Be ready. The imperative, be ready. Paul told the young preacher Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, Preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. What would you think of a pastor that came to the pulpit on Sunday morning after having all week to seek the Lord, to pray, to study the word of God, and to stand before his congregation and say, Oh, I'm sorry this morning. I don't have anything to say. I just didn't, didn't come up with a sermon, so I'm sorry. I'm going to dismiss you. 
What would you think about that, Pastor? A few Sundays of that, and probably he would be looking for the church that would let him do that. Be ready to give an answer. Be ready in season, out of season. I remember years ago, my wife and I moved to a certain area of Mississippi. I'm not sure I had even, even ever been in that area before. Uh, before I went and tried out for that church and then was elected and we moved up there. What a change. First Fellowship, minister's fellowship I attended, the presbyter said something like this. Welcome, Brother Smith, into the group, uh, coming to pastor and name the church. And, and then he says, most pastors have a candy stick up their sleeve, so he's going to come and share that with us. I didn't know I was supposed to speak on that ministerial occasion. The next meeting we had, I think the, gift, the guest speaker had failed to show up or something. The presbyter says something like this, I'm going to ask Brother Smith to come and speak for us. I got up and I mentioned something about uh, the last time he had said something about preachers having a candy stick up their sleeve, and I thought he was looking up my other sleeve. Instant, in season, out of season. Let me tell you something. It's not just preachers that need to be instant. Be ready always to give an answer. And that means give a testimony. Give a reason. Give a, a purpose for who you are in Christ. He called you to be his child. I even did a little bit of reading with regard to, let me just read it for you, okay? Over in 1 John, an interesting little scripture here. This is the children of God and the children, in this is the children of, in this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Now what that's saying is, here's the example of the difference between the children of God and the children of God. Did you know that there's only two people in the world? Two families, children of God, children of the devil. The writer here says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. The practice of righteousness. That's what I'm talking about, the insulation between us and the outside world. The armies of God fight for righteousness. That means the angels fight to protect the character of God. And when we're walking with the Lord in His righteousness, we have the angelic hosts of God right along with us. Are you with me? Hallelujah. I want to be a child of God. Amen. And so we are workers. We have this divine imperative to be ready so as at a moment's notice we can travel. That's the way it was in the Old Testament. They were assigned specific locations for the purpose that when the trumpets blew and the cloud moved from off the tabernacle and began to move in a particular direction, the Shekinah glory of God was leading God's people. The people would just gather up and get all their herds and flocks together in their tents, fold everything up, pack it away, and they were ready to move. And they knew who was going out first, who was going second, who was going third, who was going there, and who was coming in last in the rear guard, the armies of God, right in the middle of that processional was the glory tent, all folded, tucked away, and carried by those who were working together. Amen. That's according to the plan of God. And God has placed upon us that divine providence and that divine purpose 
and that divine imperative that we be a part of His work. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, we have divine assurance. In Matthew, Matthew closes his, his book with the great, what we call the Great Commission. <clears throat> Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, that is, teach all nations, all the word there, ethne, means ethnicities. Teach all ethnics, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. There's that term, all things, again. Keep that in mind. That I have commanded you, and lo, here's the accompanying assertion, the assurance. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I'm with you. When the glory was walking in the middle of the camp, walking on the shoulders of those priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the cloud was leading, and the people were ahead and following. God was in the midst of the camp. When we are following the cloud of God's purpose, God says He is with us. To me, there is a connection there. And we absolutely know, we are absolutely assured that all things work Together, not just work, but work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. I want you just to take notice. I mentioned all things back in Matthew chapter 28. If you look ahead a little bit in verse 32 of this 8th chapter of Romans, He says, How shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Amen? God is going to take care of His people. Freely give us all things. Same identical word as is recorded in Romans 8.28. All things work together. And then the Scriptures tell us later, Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Hallelujah! You look back up in verse 28, you find all things work together for good to those who love God. And then down in verse 37, God reciprocates. In these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. That's a pretty good mix, isn't it? It's called together. Hallelujah. I'm a child of God. There's an intrinsic connection today between me and my Father because He's called me to follow Him, to walk in connection with Him. He has restored me to a better place than Adam had in the garden. Adam had to wait for the cool of the day, or the, the term really means breeze of the day. Sometimes I've been around summer, summer days when there wasn't much breeze blowing. And I have been around some experiences in life where there wasn't much of a cooling breeze to be had anywhere around. Some of you may be experiencing those times right now when you need the breeze, but let me tell you something else. God said, I am with you. Always. I'm with you always, together. Workers together. All things work together. So where do these divine signs start that are found there in Mark 16, 20? So then after the Lord had spoken to them, 
He was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with, same basic term there, with them confirming the word through accompanying signs. Where do the signs of God start? With you and me. When we work with God, according to the purposes of God, we're workers together with him. Amen. We know that all things work together for good. You see, it happens in the lives of those who are following the presence of God. Who are together with God. So grateful today. Our God calls us to be together with him. Jesus said it somewhat like this. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And it wasn't just the geography that he was going to prepare. He prepared a place right here and now, close to his heart for us. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself that where I am, there you may be also. Where am Jesus when he said that? He was pre-crucifixion. He was still walking dust. But he am in the presence of the Lord, uh, presence of his Father. Do you hear me today? We am the children of God. We am in the presence of God. We am working together with the Lord. We am seeing things work out together for His purposes. Keep your chin up. He said, when these things begin to come to pass, look up. Lift up your heads. Your redemption's getting close. Amen? Listen, if you're not ready, for that coming of the Lord. I want you to bow your heart and repeat these words with me just for a moment. Mean them with all of your soul. Let this be a connecting point with, between you and God. Repent and call on His name. Repeat these words with me this morning. Lord Jesus, I come to you because you invited me. I am a wretch. I am a sinner. I am lost. But you are the cleansing Savior. Your blood cleanses from all sin. And I give myself to you today. Be my Lord and Savior. I am sorry for my sins. Cover me under your blood. Forgive me and help me to walk with you so that we can be together forever. Help me to work together with you, so that together I can be where you are in the presence of God and have you with us just as you promised to be until the end of the age. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. If you said that prayer, we would like to assist you and help you here at First Assembly. We desire to make disciples of people, not just count converts. So many times we count converts and we, we find some of them to go AWOL before they're really disciples. We don't want that to happen to you. We want you to be a disciple. Let us know. Let us plug you into a discipling ministry, teaching ministry. One place to start is in the Sunday school class this afternoon at 6 o'clock. May God help us to together be disciples of the Savior. Amen. Let me pray for you today. Father, as we close this service, we are so grateful for the mercies of God. We are so thankful for the grace of God. 
And we're so thankful that you have invited us to be together with you. We ask you, Lord, to take us, mold us, work in us, work together with us. Oh, God, do the work that you want to do through us, that we may be the children of God, doing righteousness, living for the Lord, lifting up Jesus. Thank you today for mercy. Thank you for grace. Thank you for transforming us by the power of your presence. We pray for these listeners today to be anointed, to be quickened, to be strengthened, to be fed from the hand of God, the word of God, and the presence of God. May they know that the providence of God and the purpose of God goes with them today and this week. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you today. Amen. 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 Do you love Jesus today? Yes. My wife's going to come and close our time together. Give Jesus a good thanks offering before she comes. And may God bless you today. Thank you for being with us today. We're, we're just so pleased that you could join us. And we just um, would love to hear from you. Uh, uh, Roger is going to put up a couple of slides. One slide that he's going to put up is the one that tells you about our online giving. And if you would like to do online giving, then you need to download this app that Roger is showing you right here. Just uh, go online and, and um, uh, type this in. Uh, Church Center. I, could, I was trying to read it on the screen there. Church Center. That's what you need to type in. And, um, and, it'll, and you can quickly set up to do online giving if you would like to do that, if that's something that's, that would interest you. Also, if you would like to just get in touch with us to let us hear from you, uh, here's our contact information, our, our mailing address, our phone number, our email address, and even Facebook and um, YouTube. So contact us, let us hear from you. We would love to pray with you if you have prayer requests. And uh, if you've prayed with Brother Larry this morning, we would love it. And uh, we'll see you in Sunday school tonight for those of you that can join us. God bless.